In this video, I want to look at using a semi-batch reactor where we have two parallel reactions with different reaction orders. And the objective is to determine which arrangement of the semi-batch reactor will give us the higher selectivity for the desired product. And so our possibilities are to fill the reactor with component A initially, and then slowly add B to the reactor, or to fill the reactor instead with component B and then slowly add A. And our question is, which mode of operation is going to give higher selectivity for a desired product? And our desired product D is first order in A and second order in B, whereas the undesired product is first order in both of these species. And so the reasoning, the qualitative reasoning, would be that we want to keep the concentration of B as high as possible because if we look at the rate that we're making D at any time over the rate that we're making U, this is an isothermal reactor, we fix the temperature, this ratio, you see, does depend on the concentration of A but it's proportional to the concentration of B. So this says we want the concentration of B to be as high as possible to get the highest selectivity. This would be an instantaneous selectivity here at any time this is the rate we're making D relative to you. So that says this is the mode of operation that we would use to give us the highest selectivity. And the question now is how high is that selectivity? And so to determine that, we need to solve the, the material balances. So what I've done is solve the material balances for both situations. First, for the, the low selectivity case. So, and that's where we start with A. And so B is always at a low concentration, which would not favor the first reaction. And here's selectivity, which now for at any given time the not instantaneous selectivity but the number of moles of D that we have over the number of moles of U. Because when we empty out the reactor that's the important number. And you can see the selectivity is only about 0.3 when we finish the reactor. The numbers I've set up for this system are in the use dimensionless units. The time of 10 is where we stop adding B because we've added enough B that the number of moles of A and the number of moles of B added to the system are the same. This is the plot of the number of moles. So this is the number of moles of the undesired, number of moles desired as a function of time. So if we look at the number of moles of A in the reactor is the function time number of moles of B. The number of moles of A is decreasing as reaction is proceeding. We're continuously adding B, but of course that B is reacting, so its concentration doesn't get very high. And at this point we stop adding B and reaction continues. And the stoichiometry is one to one. So now the number of moles of B and the number of moles of A are decreasing at the same rate. We detain these graphs from a polymath program where we used rate constants that were the same. They're not the same dimensions, but I used the, the dimensionless example just to make this easier. The mass balances for the reactions, and the only difference is we're adding B, so this is the flow rate of B, a molar flow rate entering the reactor. And the molar flow rate of B is given here. Up to a time of 10, the flow rate is 10. Otherwise, the flow rate is zero. So we turn off the flow. We likewise have an equation for the volumetric flow rate. And we need a differential equation for how the volume's changing with time because that certainly affects the concentrations. To calculate the selectivity, it's ratio of number of moles of D of the number of moles of U. For really small times, we don't calculate the selectivity because at time equals zero, the number of moles of U is zero, and the program would not run because trying to divide by zero. 
So in comparison to this low selectivity case, where the selectivity is only 0.3 at its highest value, here is the high selectivity case. So now notice the selectivity at short times, concentration of B is very high, selectivity is 9.5. Then the selectivity drops as more A is added, and the B is diluted because of adding A and because of reaction. And the selectivity is, you know, approximately 2.5 or maybe a little higher at the longer time. Notice this is dramatically higher than 0.3, almost a factor of 10 higher. And this shows now in D, number of moles D, number of moles of U. So by switching the order that we add the species, we can increase the selectivity a factor of 10. Very similar behavior for the species, but reverse. Now this is the number of moles of B, and this is the number of moles of A. And the equations now are the same, except now our mass balance in A, we're having a molar flow rate of A coming into reactor. And so this is an example where choosing the correct way to run a semi-batch reactor, we have parallel reactions with different reaction orders, we can dramatically increase the selectivity.